both right up on each other. They can't read both signs. Oh, okay. Here we go. right there and face that way or something. Right there. You just can't be right behind her at all. But those have an interference with my headset or something when it did that beep. What? Did you want? Huh? Did you want to tell me something? No, I'm. I said hit the button for me. back out here in the rain once again and we're not going anywhere. We come out here to preach to you the gospel of peace, the gospel of God's salvation to man. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes. God bless you, sir. That's a Christian right there. That's a man who loves the Lord. He ain't afraid of the gospel. He knows it's God's power to save sinners today. Do you know what God's doing today? Do you know what you're called to in this world? Does anybody that can hear my voice know why you're here? Were we all just put on this earth to run around and chase our flesh and fulfill our desires? Or is there a greater purpose at work? What is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanish it away. What are you going to do with your slice of time that the creator of all things has given you? You want to waste it, you're free to do so. If you want to redeem your time, you can do that as well. We're out here to redeem time. To redeem means you purchase it back. You know your life isn't yours. God give it to you as a free gift. He give you this slice of time. And those of us that understand His will can then purchase back. We can begin to redeem our time to fulfill His eternal purpose in the heavens. The ministry is twofold. Save lost people and edify those saved sinners. This is part of the ministry. It's God's beckoning to the lost world. He sends His workers. We are out here as workers of the Lord, ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. We beseech you by Him be ye reconciled to God. How are you reconciled to God? You got to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's only one way in the heaven. Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's only one way in, guys. His name is Jesus Christ. Will you believe today? Will you believe the gospel of your salvation? Amen. What is the gospel of your salvation? Amen. Listen at this. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. That's where we're at today. We're in a world that is unrighteous before God's righteous judgment. And be careful with where you want to be with that knowledge. Because if you say, preacher, I don't care. I just want to do what I want to do. The Bible says that God gave them over 
It says that even as they did not like to retain God and their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things that are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness. And then Paul lays out a massive list of unrighteous acts in there. He has murder, debate, fornication, covetousness, maliciousness, all these things. And then Paul goes on to say, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgeth. Why? For wherein thou that judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. Why do you condemn yourself with your judgment? For thou that judgest doest the same things. But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth. What that mean, means is God, man has an unrighteous judgment. You know, I know, I think of all the people that judge heroin addicts, right? We're just like, oh, get a job, you loser. And then one of their family members becomes a heroin addict, and all of a sudden we got compassion, don't we? Oh, now we care about the addict. That's unrighteous judgment of man, because it's self-centered. We only care about others when it's affecting us. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which doest such things, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? It's another one of man's problem. Man likes to put this earth on trial. It's evil, guys. I'm aware of it. But careful with your judgment. Careful with trying to call down God's wrath from heaven upon this place. Because if God were to stand up and begin judging this place, look out, the whole thing's coming down, baby. Do you think you're going to escape the judgment of God? I know I wouldn't escape it. That's why I'm out here right now to preach to you God's salvation, to preach to you the free gift of mankind. We say, what even is the gospel, preacher? The gospel of Jesus Christ is that Jesus Christ come into the world, died on a cross, he was buried, a perfect, sinless sacrifice for mankind. God raised him up the third day, and if you believe that gospel, that Christ died and shed his blood for your sins, God says, if you believe that, I'll seal you by my Holy Spirit under the day of redemption. That is the gospel. It is simple. If you can walk through a door, you can get saved. Christ said, I am the door. He's the way, guys. It's that simple. It comes solely through faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. And not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, lest anyone should boast. Gospel is God's free gift to mankind. But a lot of people think they're going to earn their way into heaven. A lot of people think they're going to get in there according to their works. But God says he's going to render every man according to their deeds. So careful trying to work your way to heaven. God's going to give you exactly what you produced. What so things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now, boy, don't you just love those two words in the Word of God? It means something's changed. Amen. What's changed? But now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. 
Why? For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely. Being justified freely. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood. Why? To declare His righteousness that He might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Amen. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Take it for a rip. There's a little button uh, right there once you get it on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're on. Amen. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word is with God, and the Word was God. Hey, listen, I want to tell you about a story. Hey, we all know it's the Christmas season. Christmas Eve's tomorrow. Christmas Day's the day after. Hey, maybe y'all have heard about the story of Jesus. Amen. The virgin birth. Hey, there was a man named Jesus, a little child who was born in a manger. There's a little kid named Jesus who was born in a manger in that stable with all the animals gathered around it. And we made it. And some of y'all may have grew up in church, or maybe your grandma and your grandpa, or maybe your mom and your daddy, maybe they told you about that story. And maybe they ended the story like that. I'm not sure if you know the rest of it. I'm not sure if maybe you, you don't know the whole picture if you don't know the whole story and the story don't end at a little kid being born in the stable the story don't end at a child being born of a virgin the story don't end over oh, Jesus in that barn but Jesus lived a perfect life hey Jesus grew up he didn't sin not one time hey you're looking at a man who is a sinner you're listening to a man who's lived a sinful life you're listening to a man who's felt God over and over and over again just cause of him preaching to you just because I'm here and I've got a Bible, just because I wear a, a suit on church, I wear a suit to church on Sunday, don't mean I'm any let low, less of a low down sinner that you are. Amen. Hey, we're all sinners saved by grace. Amen. But that story, hey, Jesus lived a perfect life. Jesus did not sin at one time. Jesus yeah. never talked back to his parents. Jesus never lied. Jesus never cheated. Jesus never sinned. Not one time. He lived a perfect life. Life. He lived a sinless life. He never messed up. His mouth was always on point. Hey, his, he passed all his grades. He had straight A's all the way through. Jesus lived the perfect life tonight. I want you to know that. He lived the perfect life for 30 years. And on his 30th birthday, maybe not his birthday, but he started his three and a half year ministry. Amen. Hey, Jesus lived, was in the ministry for three and a half years where he would heal the sick. He made the blind see. He raised the dead. Hey, he made the lame man walk. Hey, Jesus, those things actually happened. They're not just fairy tales in the story. These things actually happened to a man who was born on that virgin birth. And that man, after his three and a half year ministry, he went to a place called Galgotha. Hey, that man went to a place called Calvary. Hey, Jesus took a cross that was the size of this telephone pole, and he drove it three and a half miles through the streets of Jerusalem after they beat him, after they put, after they mocked him, hey, after they, they spit on him and they and they beat him with a cat of nine tails. After all the Roman soldiers did that, this man named Jesus, who was a hundred percent God and a hundred percent man, yeah. hey, this man named Jesus pulled the cross and carried the cross all the way through the streets of Jerusalem to the hill of Golgotha, the place of a skull. Jesus took the cross and he went up on Calvary and they put nails through his hands, they put nails through his feet, they nailed him to the cross, they set him up on there and he died a 
execution end. And he died. The Bible says that you cannot recognize him. How bad they beat him. You cannot recognize Jesus from his face. But how hard they beat him. How hard they beat him. And they mocked him. And all the sufferings that he went through. And he did that. He didn't do it for himself. He didn't make it so that those Roman, Roman soldiers could look down on Jesus Christ. Went through all that pain. He went through all that suffering. He went through all that trouble. He went through all the trials. Hey, Jesus Christ did all that for you and me. Amen. Hey, he didn't do it for himself. He didn't have to do all that, but he did it because he loves you tonight. Hey, Jesus loves you tonight. I want you to know. Hey, Jesus made a way for you and I to get to heaven because God Almighty cannot look down on sin. Hey, Jesus made a way when he died on that cross. He covered us in his blood. He made a way. Hey, he was a propitiation, amen, for sin. Hey, Jesus came, and when he died on that cross and that blood was shed, he made a way to cover our sinful nature. He made a way to cover our sinful soul that we could be righteous in the sight of God, amen. that we could be righteous and when God looks at us. Hey, when God looks at us and you've accepted Jesus in your heart, he no longer sees Spencer Syndrome. Yeah. He no longer sees the Lord out sinner that I am, but when he looks at me, he sees his son, he sees his son's blood, because Jesus Christ is the covering over my sinful nature. Jesus Christ is the covering over my sinful soul. Jesus Christ is the one who saved me. Hey, Jesus Christ is the one that lives on the inside. Hey, I'm no longer a slave to sin. Yeah. I no longer am a slave to the things of the world because I've got Jesus Christ living and reigning on the inside of my members. Jesus Christ lives inside of me and he can live inside of you tonight. All you have to do is accept him. The yeah. Bible says, confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead and thou shalt be saved. Amen. Yeah. It's not about good works. It's not about living a righteous life. Yeah. It's not about reading your Bible. It's not about praying. It's about accepting his son hey. into your heart. Hey, listen, you want to know how you get to heaven? It's not about going to church on Sunday. Amen. All those things happen after you're saved. But good boy, when Jesus lives in your heart, hey, you want to do some things for him. Hey, man, you want to go street preaching. Hey, you want to read your Bible. Hey, you want to pray some more. Hey, all those things are an after effect of salvation. But you want to know what takes you to heaven? It's not living a good life. Hey, it's not having good works. It's not handing out tracts. It's not reading your Bible. It's not going to church. The only thing that gets you to heaven is the blood of Jesus Christ. It's believing on his son. Hey, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. Amen. You want to know how you get to God? You want to know how you get to heaven tonight? Hey, I can tell you right now. I can tell you how to get to heaven. Hey, I know some of y'all, maybe you're struggling. Maybe you got that emptiness inside, and you're trying to fill it with the liquor bottle. You're trying to fill it with the smoke pot. You're trying to fill it with the needle. I'm here to tell you, none of those things will cover the sin. None of those things will fill the void in your heart. The only thing that can fill that hole in your heart, that hurting in your heart, is the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, you want to get right tonight? Hey, you want to get that void filled? You want to get the joy of the Lord? Hey, you want to know how, how I can wake up in the morning having all hell break loose during the day and have a smile on my face and say, glory to God, hallelujah, amen, it's a good day to be saved. It's because I've got Jesus Christ on the inside. I've got the joy of the Lord inside of me. Hey, you want to know how to get saved? It's just accepting Jesus. It's accepting Jesus' <laughs> hey, free gift of salvation into your heart. Hey, it's not about going to church. It's not about having all the great things. But it's accepting what Jesus has done. Hey, yeah. tonight, will you accept Amen. him? Will you accept what Jesus has done for you? Hey, Jesus died on that cross so you and I can go to heaven one day. Will yeah. you accept him tonight? Will you accept him? Amen. The Bible says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. Yeah. Hey, don't wait for the next revival. Don't wait for that next church service. Hey, you know what? It's time to get saved. Now is time to get saved. Now is the accepted time. Yeah. Hey, you want to know when it's the right time to bow your head and lift your eyes up to God and call on God to save you? It's now, friend. It's now. Yeah. Now on Amen, preacher. Brother Cole.
Terrific, too. It's good breaching. Let them cook. What say the scriptures? Your life is but a vapor. It appears for a little time and then vanisheth away. You see, we have such a short time on this lot, on this earth. You look around you, and you notice all these things. Eventually, if you realize, if you pay attention, that everything cor is so corrupt, it all rots, right? It, all the things that you will gain in your life, one day will either rot before you die, or you're gonna die before they rot. Whichever one, right? You know that everything degrades. Why is it like that? Why can't everything just be there for you? Why can't, why does everything gotta break? It's because the Bible says we're subject to vanity. Yep, not willing to. Amen. But by reason of him, who I've subjected the same in hope. See, we yeah. have hope. Yes, sir. Amen. But let's look back at that verse. What is your life? What do you do on a daily basis? What profit is there? At the end of the day, when you die, what profit have you gained? By waking up in the morning, going getting a job, getting a car, getting a nice house, getting all these things. Maybe you don't even have a nice house. Maybe you're just, maybe you're poor. There's nothing wrong with that. But with anything that you have, whether you're poor or rich, what would they profit you at death? The Bible says, for his appointment of the man wants to die, but after this, the judgment. We'll get to that in a minute. See, one day, every man has something to face that is called death. Every man is scared of this thing called death. I'll tell you what, some people aren't though. That's including me. Why? I have hope in Christ. Amen. Amen. The hope of glory. Amen. He has given me the earnest of our salvation, which is his spirit. You know why? Because I trusted in his blood. Amen. What is your life? It is vain. And corrupt. That's what your life is. <laughs> Amen. Once you die, everything you have down here is nothing. Yep. Vanity. But it says after this, the judgment. the judgment. See, you have something coming for you when you die, whether you want to believe it or not. I mean, how how limited, how small-minded is it to think that you're going to live here and that's it? You live, die. That's it. How small-minded is that? But I'll tell you what, that's what man is. Man is very small-minded. But amen, that's why we got a God. He's given us an eternal soul. But it's up to you whether you know where you're going or not. Whether you go to heaven or hell. Amen? Whether you trust in his blood. You will be judged one day by the holy and righteous judge. The just judge. So you think about it, what is heaven? Heaven is a holy place. What is God? He's a just God. Amen. He's holy and perfect and eternal. How can you get into heaven? The only way for you to be getting to heaven is to be perfect, right? That makes a lot of sense. God is perfect. Nothing bad happens in heaven, right? You have to be perfect to get to heaven. But I tell you what, man cannot be perfect. Man is ungodly. What does the Bible say about that? The Bible says, There is none righteous, there is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no not one. You see that? Even this Bible, written way back in 1611, this Bible says, They are together become unprofitable. This Bible knows something. I'll tell you that. Their throat is an open sepulchre. With their tongues have they used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. 
destruction and misery are in their ways. You see that? Destruction and misery. Amen. That is all our lives are. Destruction yep. and misery. Go ahead. You can't even live without having to have a job working your tail end off just to survive in this world. Nothing but destruction and misery. Mm. And then something breaks, you gotta go spend your money again. Fix that. Destruction and misery are in their ways. Guess what it says next? Corruption. And the way of peace have they not known. I tell you what, I bet 98% of people that can hear my voice, there's not many, but all you online too, says the way of peace have they not known. I bet you ain't got no peace. And I can guarantee you, if you're not saved, you don't have peace. No, right? sir. That's right. Preach. Why? Because the Bible says, therefore, being justified by faith, we, we have, have peace, peace with God. With God. Amen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then, first of all, it's through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then accepting his free gift of salvation, putting your faith in his blood. Amen. You receive that peace to God. But we're going to point back at that verse, right? After your death, you are judged by the holy and just God. So, if you're going to be judged by a holy and just God, and you are ungodly, uh -oh. would you not want to be on his good side? That's all I'm saying. I want to be on his good side. Amen. Well, guess what? I can't do nothing good. Nope. Neither can you. <laughs> Amen. Man can't do good. Nope. We don't know how. I mean, goodness, Adam, he was, I mean, he, he was made on the seventh day in like the next chapter. The man disobeyed God. He had one commandment. He disobeyed him. Yep. We can't do anything good. Amen, preacher. But guess what? That's why we have hope in Christ. Amen. Amen. Being justified freely by his grace. Right? Yeah, amen. First of all, it's a free gift. And we're under his grace. See, he has given us grace, even though we're so ungodly. He has given us hope. Amen. What did he do? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. I don't know if you know the story. So Christ came down, right? That's why we celebrate Christmas. Oh, amen, Vladimir. That's why we celebrate Christmas. A lot of people, they don't celebrate Christmas. You hear all the time. Save people, say, people oh, right there. about the gifts. Yeah, that's the only reason you go over to your friend's house. You go over to have a fun time or get gifts, whatever you're doing. You go over to have a good time on Christmas. You don't go over to celebrate God. Amen. You don't go, you don't go to celebrate the birth of Christ, our only hope. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what. It's like my brother said. Well, he wasn't just, first of all, a normal man. He wasn't just a good man. He was a perfect God in the flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the word was God. Amen. Great is the mystery without controversy. I don't know how it goes. God was manifest in the flesh. In the flesh. Amen. God was manifest in the flesh. That is Christ. Yep. Just from the Spirit. The Bible says, it, it says, Christ who is the image of God. Right? Christ is the image of God. Manifest in the flesh. He came and led the perfect life. And once he hit of age, you know what he did? You know why there's all of this? It talks about him at 12 years old. Guess what he was doing when Christ was 12 years old? He was in the synagogues. He was listening to the doctors, listening, asking questions, and teaching. You know what Christ did up until his ministry? He was studying. That's what he was doing. God was still, God was still a man in the flesh, but he was manifested. He's down here. Learning about his God. Should you not learn about your God as well? He was still a man. And when he came of age, he did his three-year ministry until he had healing the sick, making the, the dumb speak, right? The lame walk. But then, on that day, right, he went to Calvary. God sent his only son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. See, he gave him. God gave his son. He didn't just send him. He gave him to us. You know what man did with that? Man did with his son. He cast him out of the vineyard. You know what that means? He was cut off. They killed him. They killed him. God gave him the only perfect thing man has ever had on this earth besides God himself. Christ. And they killed him. But guess what? You know what God said? He said, that's all part of my plan. Amen. That's what God wanted to happen. You say, that's crazy. Well, I tell you what, there ain't no other way for you to go to heaven. God sent his son 
And through sending his son, who was righteous, he took on all your sins on that cross. Amen. And guess what he did? What a trade. This is the greatest trade you'll ever, the greatest deal you have in your life. The most important thing that you'll ever gain, if you accept it. He gave us his righteousness, and he took all our sins. And he died, and on the third day, he rose again. Amen. You know what he did through it, rising again? He gave us grace. Amen. He gave gifts unto men. He gave us grace. Amen. You know what that is? Right now we're in the period of the forbearance of God. You know why God hasn't cracked the sky yet and judged us all with fire? You know why? Because of his forbearance and long suffering. Amen. God is a gracious God. That's why the world is still the way it is. You say, why is it so corrupt? Because God is waiting for you to get saved. For God is willing that all men might be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Amen. That's why he sits there and waits. That exchange was his righteousness for your sins. Amen. It says there is no fear of God before their eyes. I tell you what, that's why they killed Christ. They didn't know him enough. To, they didn't know him enough to fear him. They're so full of, full of man's wisdom and all of this stuff, philosophy, whatever you want to call it, all this stuff that has nothing to do with Christ, that they didn't see God in him. That's what's lacking. I mean, that's what's lacking today. That's why there's so. That's why there's no. I don't mean to call nobody out, but that's why there's nobody out here right before Christmas street preaching. Why y'all, you are sitting on your phone. There's nothing wrong with listening to preaching. But that's why you're sitting on your phone, doing whatever you're doing, just having a good time. If you're a Christian, you're not out there preaching. You're not spreading the word. Why? Because you're so full of man's wisdom, you don't worry about the things of God. Amen. Go ahead, preacher. Amen. What does it say? For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Amen. But unto us which are saved, which it are is the saved. power of God. Amen. Amen. What does it say? The Bible says it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Yep. Amen. See, that is his power unto salvation to save you from what? Hell. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the, of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? You see that? God's going to destroy the wisdom that you have if it's not in Christ. That's right. You know, on that day, the day of Christ, even if you, if you get there, first of all, if you get to that point, if you don't accept it, what is that? What is the payment for the wrong that you've done? That is death, and a second death after that, right? Going to hell. But I'll tell you what, there's no coming back from that. So once it's paid, there's no coming back. You don't just pay it for a season. You're in hell for eternity. But what does it say? God will destroy the wisdom of the wise. So what is it going to profit you for gaining all this man's wisdom? Nothing. Why? It's all vain and corrupt. God destroys it. When you die, all that is gone. You see that? God destroys the wisdom of the wise. We're all subject to vanity and death. For after that, in the wisdom of God, you see that? In the wisdom of God, the world, by wisdom, knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. You see what's What's gone wrong with our country and with the world as well? But I'll give America, since I lived there for one, and because America has had the greatest fall, right? America was founded on God, right? What's his name? Uh, what was the? What was the second president? What was his name? Adams, John Adams. John Adams. I think. John Adams is that his name? John. The second Adams? one, I think. Yeah. He said, our government is not fit for anybody besides a religious people. You see that? Oh, amen. Yeah, That's you got to have morals. That's why country fell. It says, in the wisdom of God. At one point, it was in the wisdom of God. It says, by wisdom, do not God. America, let God slip away. Each of those, you know, movements in Congress, not only that, 
it doesn't start at Congress. It starts at the heart. You say, man, if only Congress fix the government, it would be great. Right? No. That's not how it works. It's the heart of the people. We don't have a monarchy, first of all. I'll just tell you that. It doesn't matter what the ruler says. It's the people. When the majority says we don't want God, guess what? God is pushed away. That's what's happened to America. They let God go. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. For unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. And then, see, Christ is that wisdom, that eternal wisdom. What does his wisdom say? He says, his wisdom says, come unto the knowledge of truth and be saved. That's what his yeah. wisdom says. See, these things profit you something. speech and my preaching is not with man's wisdom, not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit of power. Why? That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. We're not out here giving you talking points or arguing. We're not using common sense or any of these things or science to prove God. You know why? Because this is Christ. We preach Christ crucified, not the wisdom of men. Why? So your faith stands in the wisdom of God. Amen. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. You see these things. It says, as it is written, I had not seen nor ear heard. See, that's prophecy. You better be thankful that God you, gave brother. you the Bible. Amen. We're in his period of long suffering. Right? We've been given the New Testament. Right? It says, it says the Greeks seek after wisdom. Right? They're always seeking a new thing. There's a new thing for you. Amen. He gave us his grace. That's the new thing. You're living in his forbearance. There's a new thing for you. Dwell on that a little bit. We speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Why don't they receive these things? Because the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. You see that? Yep. Bless the light of the glorious gospel. Bless the light of the glorious gospel of Christ shine to them. Amen. Amen. So he don't want you to hear these things. But I tell you what, you don't understand any things as well because you have all this man's wisdom. Right? You won't accept God's wisdom. That's why you don't understand these things. It's a step-by-step -step process. For they are foolish to something him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. That's why the natural man says, go F yourself. Right? He says, go do something yourself. Get a job. Get a life. I'd rather cussing this out and stuff. That's why they're blowing up the chat, right? Because they don't understand these things, number one. If they understood these things, first of all, they get saved. I mean, come on. That's why you're mad, because you don't know. You don't know you're mad because you're ignorant. That's what happens. You're ignorant of God's wisdom. But what does God's wisdom say? Amen? God's wisdom says, but now the righteousness of God without the law is witnessed, is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. And then the righteousness of God is without the law. What is the law? The Ten Commandments, right? You say, man, uh, uh, maybe you're not a Christian, maybe you are, whatever. Right? Doing good things is not stealing, right? It's not, um, you know, fornicating. It's not doing these bad things, right? But no, it says the righteousness of God is without the law. See, that's why man's righteousness is filthy rags. Because they try and do, they try and do all these good things. No. The righteousness of God is without the law. It is not in your good works. Being manifested by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, it's God's righteousness, which is by faith 
of Jesus Christ. Two things there. God is through putting your faith in his blood. But then you see it says the faith of Jesus Christ. So you see that? It's not our faith. It's his faith. Why is it Christ's faith? Amen. Why is the righteousness of God by faith of Jesus Christ? Why is it his faith? Because if you put your faith in Christ and it's only your faith, I tell you what, man doubts. Man has doubts. Christ don't. Amen. He is just. He is faithful and just to forgive. Amen. His faith is eternal. Amen. He has perfect faith. Man don't. Whether you're a preacher or not, no matter who you are, whether you think you're whatever. Man's faith falters. Right? We have doubts. If you think, if you are putting only your faith in Christ, and there's no sealing there, there's no earnest of the Spirit, there's nothing there sealing that, you'll doubt your salvation, and guess what? If it's only your faith, you're going to hell. Amen? It says, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all, and upon all them that believe. See, that is, a, first of all, a free gift. And it is available to everyone. Amen? No matter who you are. Free gift. Then he says, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. See that? Why does it say, for there is no difference? Because nobody's perfect. That's why it's to everybody. It's to everybody because there's no perfect man down here. If you're perfect, you wouldn't need it. But guess what? You're not. And then all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Then it says, being justified freely. See that? Free gift. Not do anything, but believe. Justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. See? We're justified freely by His grace. You notice that? It's not your good works. Nothing you can do gets you to heaven. You say, oh, I think i got to do my part I gotta um, let my good outweigh my bad, right? That's not how it works. No, you have to, first of all, have God's righteousness. Second of all, it's by His grace. If you're already given something, if you're given grace of a man, say you're worthy of a punishment, but He gives you grace. He says, no, I'll let that one go. You're okay, I forgive you. If He give you grace, you didn't have to do anything to accept that. Nothing happens. You didn't work for that. But... If you're working for your salvation, it is then of debt. You see that? You do good works, it is of debt. Your righteousness is of debt. You are paid that righteousness when you do these good things. But when you're under His grace, you see that? First of all, it is eternal salvation there. God's righteousness, when you're under His grace, it is free. There's nothing there to pay for. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Amen? Redemption in Christ. Whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood. See that sacrifice. God in the flesh. Christ was our sacrifice. But it says through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remissions of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Amen? So in your period, in this period of forbearance of God, you must put your faith in Christ, right? Through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness. Putting your faith in His blood, you are given His righteousness. Amen. To declare, I say at this time, His righteousness, that He might be just, and the justifier of Him which believeth Amen. in Jesus. Amen. Where is boasting now? It is excluded. By what law of works? No, it's not of works. By the law of faith. Amen. You see that? There's no boasting. Why? Because you've been given a free gift. You yep. don't boast in a gift you've been given. Amen. Just believe. Because it's been given you of another man. Amen. Christ, the Son of God. That's good, preacher. Wonder grace. He says, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by, by what? Works? No. Faith. By faith. Amen. Amen. Not works. <laughs> what does it say? It says, not him that believe." Now to him that worketh not, but believeth. Now to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad we don't have to work for our salvation. Amen. It's to him that worketh not, but to him that believeth. His faith is counted for righteousness. 
That's right. You're given Christ's righteousness when you put your faith in him. Amen. And he gives you that earnest of the spirit. The sealing until the day of Christ. Amen. So we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Amen. Accept Christ's free gift. Amen. Wonder his grace. He's been giving you grace. All you have to do is accept that. Amen. Fill that void in your heart. You know you've been created by a God. You wonder why. You wonder why your life is just so empty. And you just go from day to day. And you're like, man, what am I doing? Maybe not. Maybe you're just so distracted that you're living a good life. But I tell you what, death is coming. Right? When death comes, what is that going to profit you? Ain't no amount of uh, bunkering down in a bunker under the ground. You know, ain't no amount of prepping. Nothing's going to save you from death. Right? Whether you live this perfect, healthy life, protected from all harm, you'll eventually at least die of old age. Right? Death is coming for you. Every man dies. Well, guess what? See that? Nothing protects you from that. You can't gain anything that protects you from death besides Christ's righteousness. Amen. Accepting that. Gaining his, gaining the earnest of the spirit. Right? That promise is given us a promise that if we accept his son, he gives us the spirit which seals us into the day of redemption. What is that? That gives us a free ticket into heaven. Amen. But that's why your life is so void. Because there's something you're supposed to do down here on earth other than live your life. And that's it. That's a God of death if he just makes you to die. If you are created to die, that doesn't even make sense. He doesn't seem like a just and holy God to me if he just makes you to die. No, he's created you to accept his son. Amen? That's why that void is there. That's the only thing that will fill that void in your heart. Christ. He's given you that void in your heart to accept his son. I tell you what, that's the only thing that's given me peace. I've been through a ton, all right? But I tell you what, the only reason I'm still here is because I got Christ. Amen? Amen? You hear a lot of people, you'll hear people over the news or whatever, just because of depression, they'll go shoot up a school and all these things or whatever, kill themselves. You hear of all these suicides and stuff. But I tell you what, you got Christ, you have peace of mind. Amen. Amen. Accept his free gift and have that peace. Amen. Through faith in his blood. Amen, preacher. We love you all. We'll be back at this. We got to head out for now. It's the, it's just too late. We can't preach much later. So we'll be back in the morning, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, America. So be with us. We love y'all. We'll see you in the pulpit. Good night. Oh, is it the whole that thing's